Good morning, everybody. Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you how to make a good PvP team. I'm going to talk about some fundamentals and some advanced mechanics in this game that good PvP players in War of the Visions are taking advantage of in every team comp they build. There is more to team building in War of the Visions than just throwing three meta units, three espers, six vision cards, and some gear into slots and just letting your team win. Now, if you're Dark Leela Joker, it's almost that easy. But even they need a little bit of help in team building to succeed at a high level. So I'm going to go over early turn manipulation, agility tuning, the different AI types, and what you can do to take three units that you want to play and make them synergize, help them work together, and make successful PvP teams. So you can go get six stars in Guild Wars, go on those big arena win streaks, win some free matches, whatever you want to do, these tips will apply to your PvP teams. So let's get started. Now, I'm going to start with something. Um, I'm just going to call it early turns. We're just going to generalize this as early turns, and we're going to go watch a fight. All right. Now, what we're going to focus on here is the early turns of this fight and how that sets up this win team to succeed even against the current like super meta dark team. Now you've probably seen this dark team a bunch before. You know how to run this. If you've seen it, you have your DPS units grouped to the middle, buff, get the hastage up from Lemire. We've seen it a billion times, but let's back up just a bit here and watch what happens on this move right here. Joom casts a buff on herself and begins running forward to engage on the enemy. One thing that this win team is doing really well is keeping Luartha and Halloween Little Leela in the back by having them group up and buff. Notice how Leela will stand still and cast a buff on herself while letting Joom go forward to engage the enemy. These dark teams rely on a lot of AoE damage. So if you can just have your tank walk out there by herself and draw the enemy DPS to her, you are removing the biggest strength from this dark team, which is their just insane ability to wombo combo down the enemy team. Now, the Leela gets a little bit far forward right there, draws the draws the uh, Halloween Leela out, but this is the crucial move. Wind Blessing from Joom, she moves up to right there, and look at the spacing. Joom is off to the right by herself, and it almost works out that Winter Luartha is able to snipe the Halloween Little Leela. Instead, she uses Bells, which is fine. The enemy is already into healing mode. This is a big deal, too, because now Lemire is not casting Quicken on people. And watch this. This next turn, right after Joker goes, is the big moment in the fight. They're finally going to get to engage, and look how the engage goes down. It is the limit break from Halloween Little Leela on only the Joom. At this point, the win team just runs over this fight. Joom will continue to move forward and engage the enemy. Winter Luartha and Halloween Little Leela stay off to the left and just clean everybody up. That was good early turn manipulation to get a win. Now let's go into specifics about how you can set that up. And let's be real, in these fights, in PvP and War of the Visions, there's a point right about mid-game of the fight where like R and Jesus takes the wheel and there's reflex and damage distribution and people are living with 5 HP and you're tilted and it, it gets wonky right in the middle. Once these units start engaging, you don't have control over what happens. It's all the AI and there's RNG mixed in. But you can get yourself to that middle point of a fight in the best case possible. That's early turn manipulation. That's why it's so important. So the first role I wanna talk about, the first batch of tips I wanna give has to do with your tanks. You want your tank going forward towards the enemy casting buffs on themselves and continuing to close that gap so they don't hang out with the rest of your team in the back line, drawing those big Joker Halloween Little Leela AoEs into your squad. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to use Joom as an example because that's the fight you just watched. And the first tip is this. You want to turn off especially on shorter maps, you want to turn off their longer range abilities. The Joom you just watched had every move with a longer range than Storm Siphon. So any move with range longer than two, off didn't have that thing on at all. What that does did is it allowed her to cast Vacuum Veil on turn one. And even though she might have been in range for like a Stormwind Rend on turn two, I had that off, which allowed her to put her shield online, continue to move forward towards the enemy, and she will continue to look to close that gap so she, she, can, so she can get in range for her short damage moves. This allows you, once that middle part of the game happens, your tank will keep moving forward. She will go engage the other tank or engage the other unit on the enemy team that she can hit hardest with these short range moves. As an added bonus, 
if you're looking at like, let's say Storm Siphon right here, there's an often the case, like Lemure was probably the unit on the enemy team that would take the most damage. If Joom could possibly get in range for this on Lemure, she would bypass the enemy DPS and go for the back line, further removing her from my DPS unit, from my support unit, and that's awesome. Now, another thing you're gonna wanna do is turn off AOE buffs. Something like Domain of Wind, this is a really good buff, but I don't want Joom hanging out with my backline, so I have this off. I leave myself buffs on, I leave short range abilities on, and I build her for pure tanking, right? We have single target resist, AOE resist, a lot of defense. The TMR buff is another single target buff right here, Swift Wind defense, that just gives her more defense and spirit. She is all about not dying and all about moving away from my team. All in on tankiness, Okay, so that's the tank tips, and that's how you can set your tank up to succeed. The next role I want to talk about is support. So let's talk about support next through the lens of another video. And the support we're going to highlight in this video is going to be Velus. I think Velus is the top tier support in the game. He's the best of the bunch. But these tips, these tricks will apply to any support. And I'll break it down a little bit more after we watch this guide video here about how you can apply it to other supports. But let's watch this play out. And you're going to recognize the enemy team. Same team I fought last time, right? It's Joker, it's Leela, and it's support. This is like one of the most meta teams. And I'm going to use those two units as well to draw them to Velus for a specific reason. I want to highlight a feature, let's call it a feature, of support AI. They love to stand still. And Velus is the absolute king of standing still in War of the Visions. So you want to try to take advantage of that. I'm drawing my other units because note I'm not running a tank, so I'm not I don't have to worry about my tank separating. I'm drawing my two damage units to Velus to allow him to take multiple turns standing in the back line as far away from the enemy team as possible. Joker and him have already received one haste. Joker is beginning to make his way forward, creating that separation that I want. It's Velus's turn again. Guess where he's gonna go? No Nowhere. He's going to stand right there, re-haste my, uh, my Dark Leela, and reapply his own haste. The enemy team is doing their buffing. My Leela will buff again, start moving towards the enemy, and you can see we've created this space. The enemy's still back there casting their Pierce and Missile Resist buff. Oh my gosh. Uh, Joker's going to move forward, and now the fight is starting. This is that moment I was talking about, right? R and Jesus is taking the wheel. We are now in range of each other, but we set ourselves up successfully. Velus, my Velus, is as far away away from this fight as humanly possible and look at what he just did he just cast a tmr buff on himself a solo tmr buff we gave him a skill so that even when our units were out of range of him he can still stand still for one more turn still stand still lol now the enemy is going to come back on us and look at this leela is in range to drop one of her big aoe attacks she's going to limit break our group right here and had velus been able to move up stay with the squad he might have taken like leela took 6900 damage right there velus would have taken fatal damage right there he would have died to that Instead, he's chilling in the back and watch as her, his turn creeps back up. Like, watch how this plays out. Enemy Lemure is going to drop a quicken right here. We are out of range of Joker still, I believe. So this quicken kind of just fizzles. Like, he's just going to cast bells on himself and move up. Now, look at the turn order. It's going to be Leela going next. So we get to continue to fight the enemy. And watch this. I'm gonna, This video stops right here. Look at this. This is the end of the video. Boom. Velus is moving up. I have two low HP targets who are ahead of him, and Velus is going to heal them. That heal will put their HP back to full. It will also give them more AP, and my Joker and Leela are ready to clean up this fight and kill a meta team, and a big part of it was because we set them up for success with Velus taking advantage of how the support AI works. Okay, now there's two mechanics that we're taking advantage of here that allow Velus to just chill in the back or any support to just chill in the back. The first mechanic that we're abusing is the AI's willingness or the AI's um, love with group buffs. In this case, Joker and Leela both have an AoE buff. In Joker's case, it's We Have to Survive, which is his AoE protect buff. And look, if you leave that on, if an AoE buff like that is on a Joker or a Leela or any of these units, and they're in range of another unit, they're going to run to them and they're going to cast it. So Joker comes in and casts it. Little Leela comes in and casts, I believe it's called Tactical Training. And Velus is like, hello, friends. I like to buff people. I'm going to stand here and pass out haste. Now, 
Now for Velus in particular, when he is hasting people, he's also hasting himself, which can be a good and a bad thing. The negative part of that is it allows him to keep pace with his friends even though they're hasted, he's also hasted, so sometimes they all move up together. So in Velus's case, adding in that extra layer of something like a zombie TMR, which gives him that self-buff, allowing him to stand still, have a third turn of just, I'm now going to buff myself, I don't need to move forward yet, I'm a support, we like to stand still... This is great. It allows that one extra buffer between him and the rest of his team. And this is not unique to Velus, right? Velus is not the only one who works like this. All supports in the game more or less share the same AI. Let's take Ayaka, for example. If you wanted to run Ayaka in this group, you could accomplish mostly the same thing. You, in fact, have other options. You could go Time Mage sub with her and have her just, you know, have your units come in, have her drop some haste on them, and she might not even need that third turn with a TMR buff because she's not also hasting herself, so that's something you would just have to test and feel out. But she has other options. You could have her be um, a damage amplifying support, right? Casting Divine Melody on your group. Have your group come into her, have them cast Divine Melody, Support AIs want to buff and they want to heal. They will do those things. Here's how support AI works. It will buff if nobody's low HP. It will heal if people is low HP. And if they're in range of the enemy and nobody needs a heal, they'll go for damage last. So that's how this works right here. So you could use Ayaka. They have a uh, white mage sub, right? Protect and shell, which clearly I don't use on Ayaka will also work in the same way. The thing to watch out for right here with a unit like Ayaka is they will cast buffs on themselves. So sometimes, uh, you know, this is when your passive abilities, like, uh, where, what is it, Emerald Echo? Um, nope. Where passive abilities like Null CT change, it's already equipped, where she won't cast haste on herself are important if you want her only hasting your allies and then moving forward. So you do have to test, you do have to play with it, but those are the mechanics at play, and that's how you can control your support's movement. Alternatively, if you want your support units to move, have them be in range of a unit, but out of range of being able to stand still. You can draw your support to your tank, especially if you want them to move to your tank and cast buffs. That's how you play that out. That's how the AI is working there. Okay, let's go next. I want to talk about DPS units last, and this is where we're really going to get into things like agility tuning and turn order. Okay, now let's talk about the DPS version of this guide, and we're going to talk about it through the lens of agility manipulation and turn order, and how those are two very, very powerful things. For this video, I've prepared a very similar team to the last one we saw, but I bought I brought Promptu in because I want to fight the same defense team because I really only want to show you guys like one of our not wall defenses from Guild Wars, but I'm using Promptu here because he has Dispel, which is very good against units that have haste, against units that have hate on them. You'll kind of see that play out, but we're going to really be highlighting here the power of syncing up your agility with your DPS units and the power of being faster than the enemy, or at least the potential power. Now, unfortunately for this guide, the enemy is literally buffing missile resist. So that's really going to nerf our damage a bit, but you will still see the potential um, power of this. And this, my team wins this fight. It's, a, it's the closest of the three. So here we go. Our early turn buffing is basically over. Everybody has haste now. The enemy little Leela is moving forward to engage. And watch how this plays out. Promptu's going to walk forward. He's going to do Dispel Spread. That is a dark missile attack on the enemy Leela. And because we have our agilities pretty well synced up, the Leela will not go again before Joker goes. So it's Joker's turn almost here in a second. We're going to, you know, Vel's doing his thing. Joker's turn now. He's going to do a dark missile attack. He's going to do his limit break. And this will almost kill the little Leela. If they had not done that missile resist buff, Boom, she's dead right there. Instead of being dead, she heals. But guess what? Our, we are now faster than her by a lot. We have haste. We are fast. Our agilities are synced. And Promptu's actually going to get another turn. He gets to shoot her again. But because it's Promptu and he just doesn't do a lot of damage in this case, he doesn't kill her. But my two DPS units were able to hit the enemy, the like most forward enemy, three times before that enemy got another turn. That is a very, very powerful bit of like agility manipulation in turn order that you can make happen. Now let's go talk about how you make these chains go down. Okay, now when talking about manipulating the AI of your DPS units, there's a couple tips that I want you to keep in mind. Number one, your unit will always do damage if they are in range to do damage. No DPS unit in the game will go for a buff 
if they could even just auto attack the enemy. So on longer maps like the one we're watching, it's really not a big deal. You're far enough away from the enemy where you're going to get to cast your important buffs, your TMR, stuff like that without worrying about it. However, on shorter maps, there are tanks in this game like Charlotte who can move four that can move forward very fast and end up drawing your DPS units into aggro range before they have a chance to get their TMRs offline or their key buffs. So having faster DPS units is typically a very good idea for that reason, especially on shorter maps. Now, looking at this team right here, I have essentially two damage dealers. I know little Leela's a support, but you know, it's she's a damage dealer in this group as well. And so I want to point out something I did. Let's look at Winter Luartha's agility. It's 105. The first thing I want, I'm going to, I'm focusing on these two units. The first thing I want one of these two units to do is I want Winter Luartha to run next to Halloween Little Leela and cast this accuracy buff. This group is built to kill evasion teams. This buff is really important for that. But then I want them to start killing the enemy if they're in range. So check out what I have Halloween Little Leela's agility at. 104. Halloween Little Leela is going right after Winter Luartha and that is a big deal. In fact, I actually have it tuned, like through testing, that uh, Leela won't move on her first turn and will cast this TMR, which puts puts her in the other spot in the turn order. Let me show you why that's important and how that plays out later in a fight, having them that close together in agility. Watch this. So right here, we are revisiting one of those like first fights I showed off in this video. It was a slugfest. Both of these teams were really well tuned, but look at where we are in this fight. The enemy is still going for Joom. The next two turns, like I just talked about, are Halloween Little Leela and Winter Luartha and watch this like Leela's gonna go first she's like okay I'm a damage unit I'm a Wu nation I'm gonna meta magic the group big damage to two of them not enough to one shot but Leela plus Luartha following that up is tons of damage and it deletes the enemy team this does not allow the enemy Lemure to like get a chance to heal somebody it takes your units who otherwise might not be able to one shot the enemy on their own and allows them to two-shot the enemy, taking advantage of a chain from their friend, and that was devastation. There are not many units in this game, especially non-tank units, that will live through a Little Leela magic damage attack into a Winter Luartha spear attack. That's two different damage type, neither of which are slashing or missile, which most people on this map will build for, that it's going to delete people. That is going to delete people, and the more times I can get my AI to pull off that combo, the better success I'm going to have in fights. That's why agility tuning is so important. And you really want to make sure you are setting up your DPS units with similar agility stats. Now, if you start mixing in haste, like if I switch to that other team I was kind of showing off, and this is Velus, let's, let's just put Velus back in here, you know, for the sake of this example. Velus with his haste makes it a little bit trickier. So with this group, what I had to do to get uh, my two DPS units to kind of go next to each other is I had to set Leela's agility to 100 and Joker's agility to 112, which seems like a big difference, but with the way my team played out, they only ultimately ended up going right after each other, which was nice. Now, if I'm running a tank, I often don't care in the turn order where my tank goes. If I if I am trying to sync my tank up to my DPSs, I prefer the tank to go first to be the one starting the chain for the DPS units. But this is something, there's a guy, a legend, Cayenne's my guild. You guys know that, right? There is a legend in Cayenne, a guy named Puke. Puke showed me a Guild Wars video he recorded, and we're talking like month one of the game, where he had all three of his units go one, two, three right after each other, and the, they were doing 9,999 damage at a time in the game when that wasn't really a thing, and it like changed my perspective on Guild Wars team building forever. So big shout out to Puke, who quit the game a year and a half plus ago. A legend. A real legend. Okay, I got a few more tips I want to get to before we wrap this video up. Okay, a couple bonus tips to finish off this video. Bonus tip number one is test out your comps. In arena, that just means really adjusting your comp a little bit like after every fight. Day one is a great testing day for arena. Like when you jump in there on Monday and your rank is 15,000th, just fight some teams that are like easy wins and then just make minor adjustments to your comp so it can do better when you're moving up towards those like rank 1000s if that's a big deal for you. In Guild Wars, I know it really sucks that Guild Wars testing is only open for certain hours during the day. I 
hate that, especially as a content creator who would love to abuse that for making videos like this one, but you still do want to test your comps. You're going to run into things, especially with agility, where like maybe unit resonance comes into play and you didn't see that coming, or your movement just won't be what you think it is. So at least put your teams onto a map, see them play out a couple times before you commit them to like a Guild Wars offense or defense theme. Another tip, especially for Guild Wars, is build your comps to beat something in particular. The comp that you see on the screen here is built to beat um, evasion. This is an evasion killing comp. Leela and Joom are out here to just be super high accuracy and smash evasion units. I do, however, have a nice backup plan in place. The backup plan here is I'm stacking unit target resist and AOE resist. So even if I can't find the perfect thing to hit, my team is prepared to just be like pretty tanky with Joom against anything, and I have heals and damage to back that up. So it's generically pretty good, but specifically, I am pretty darn sure it's going to beat almost any evasion team. If you want to succeed in Guild Wars, in particular, build to beat things, and if you can't beat those things, take cleanup fights for your guild, ask in Discord or something, like if you guys are coordinated at all, try to be helpful to your guild, but build to beat things. Uh, tip number three. Pay attention to which slot your units are in. In the current Guild Wars map, for example, Joom in slot 1 will start on the far right side of the map. So know who your units are going to be across from. This is particularly a big deal on smaller maps, where if you put your DPS unit, like Winter Luartha, who you need to cast that accuracy buff on first turn, and she's across from, like, a really fast tank, that tank's going to draw her forward, maybe get her killed by a Cloud or a Frederica missile or something like that. So pay attention to lane matchups, you know, 1v3, like if your lane 1 is against their lane 3, you probably need to know that, that's kind of a, the only way to learn those things is to test though. So there you go guys, I hope these tips will help you build some teams, if you want me to build some teams for you, that is a like perk I'm currently offering like members on the YouTube channel, so if you're a member on the channel, hit me up on Discord, I think it's like that new tier I added, I don't know, I mess with the tiers sometimes, so anyway, if you're a, if you're a subscriber, a, t a member on the YouTube channel and you want me to build some PvP teams for you, that's content that I really enjoy doing, so hit me up on Discord, let me know, and guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day, good luck in your PvP matches, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.